We're now at the part of the framework that I think is going to be the most beneficial for many companies. It's the daily, weekly, monthly task list, or the DWM as we call it. What's the DWM about, Eric? Well, let me share a quick scenario with you. Imagine work's going along pretty well. Yes, you're overworked, you're working more hours than you really want to, but you've got key team members in all the positions, and as long as everybody's there, stuff's happening, clients are happy, we're getting the work done. We're doing the work in the business of whatever the business is. But then imagine one of the key team members leaves suddenly. Maybe they got sick. Maybe they got abducted by aliens. That's what I like to call it. And you now have to step into that person's role and figure out what was it that they were doing? I know the general area that they were responsible for, but what were they doing on a daily basis? What were the priorities of all those tasks that they were doing? What are those oddball things that they weren't doing on a daily basis, but were really important? So imagining that scenario, how's your blood pressure doing right now? Are you going to be able to sleep tonight? Are you going to have night sweats, night terrors? Well, I know I did. When I went through that scenario, it was horrible. For me, it was our office manager leaving suddenly, and I had to process payroll. <laughs> you do not want me processing payroll. I promise you that. But I had to step in. How do we review the timesheets? How do we get the information into QuickBooks? How do we get the information out to the, the wherever it's going? How do I send the pay slips to the to the team members? What am I doing about taxes? Oh, I think losing an office manager could be the worst fear for so many of us. So wouldn't it be nice if any one of those key team members was abducted suddenly by aliens, that you had a manual that you were able to open up and look at and say, oh, here's all the tasks that that person does. Here's the priority of their tasks. Here's what they do on a daily basis, on a weekly basis, on a bi-weekly basis. I would sleep a whole lot better. So that's what the DWM is going to give us, is the start to all the tasks that somebody does on a regular basis in our business. And then from that, we're going to be able to go and start to create standard operating procedures for those different tasks. So imagine this, in your company on the wall is a big red box, kind of like one of those fire extinguisher boxes. Although instead of a fire extinguisher, there's a manual, maybe there's a USB drive. And on the glass, instead of in case of fire, it says in case of alien abduction, break glass. How would you feel now knowing that for each of your key team members, you had a manual that you could tap into in the event that they were out for a day, a week, forever, and help you to continue working in the business in addition to all the other stuff you have to do? So that's the end result of the DWM. There's three different ways that I see firms using this. One is, it really is in the case of alien abduction, break glass. Here's what we're going to do for each of those key team members. And you'd work with each of the key team members to identify what are their tasks, and then you can help them prioritize what are those systems that we want to document. And then you can work with the key team members to identify which of those processes or systems that we want to document and memorialize before the others. That's one way to use the DWM. Another way to use the DWM is you may be an incredibly overworked business owner and you're saying, Eric, that's a lovely goal, but I'm not gonna be able to work on those standard operating procedures for a year because I've got too much stuff that I'm doing. 
on my plate and I need to get rid of some stuff. Great. Let's have you go through the DWM and list off all the stuff you're doing. You're going to love a couple of the lenses we're going to use for you. I promise. There's a third way to use the DWM. It may be for some of our more established companies. Eric, we've already got all the standard operating procedures. Everybody's cross-trained and there's, we know exactly what happens when somebody's out. And as a business owner, I've already gone through and I've taken a lot of stuff off my plate, but we're simply, we're doing so much work that we need to have a virtual professional come in and step in and start doing work. Great. So let's list off the DWM just for the virtual professional. And whether you have the standard operating procedures or not, list off, here's what we want the VP to do. Those are at least three different ways to use the DWM. And now let's dive in. You ready? Let's go. Bye.